Greetings! In this video, we're going to be talking about file input and output. We're going to be showing you how you can use Python to read and write files, and then we're going to show you a bunch of tricks for how you can analyze a file in order to get at a specific piece of data, so like a specific line in the file or a specific column in a table, and that sort of thing. To get us started, I thought we'd do a quick reminder on users and input. Up until now, when I want input, I need data, I'm getting it from the user. So this should be a very familiar line to you, right? Getting a value, asking the user for a value, casting it as an integer, and storing it in a variable. When you press play, no big deal, you get your value. If I want to get multiple values, I can use my loop skills. So I can say for i in range 10, and then I can do this. And when I press play, now I can get 10 values from the user. This is all well and good if the number of values is small but it turns out that the whole reason we have computers is because we want them to analyze millions, billions, trillions of values. So we can't always ask the user for that, right? So here's an a real world example. Given the manifest of the Titanic, can you tell me how many people survived? Um, I'm not gonna have a user type in the whole manifest of the Titanic, that seems big. So we've gotta have another way to get that input. And the way that we're gonna get input is now from files. So here is an example of the Titanic dataset. It is a data set that contains 887 passengers and whether or not they survived the Titanic. You can actually see it here. If I was to uh, open it up in Notepad, you would see that it's just a bunch of uh, lines where a bunch of values separated by commas, it looks like, and that's fine. That's why it's called a comma separated value file. Uh, if you look at a particular line, you might be able to guess what the data means. For example, this could clearly be a name. This is clearly a gender. It's not clear what that 7.25 refers to. Um, so when these types of problems occur, we have to tell you what, how to interpret a particular line in a file. So here that first value is whether or not they survived. That's what we were looking for. And then uh, the last one's the fare. So this person spent $7.25 to get on the Titanic, which seems like a, a bad deal, you know, all things considered. So Python makes it really easy for us to read this file. Uh, we can actually do it in just a few lines of code. So to open a file, uh, all we need to do is make a variable, we'll call it file, and we'll say it's equal to open, and we'll do the name of the file, so titanic.csv, and then whether or not we want to read or write. So if it's read, we put quote r, if we put write, we put quote w, all right? The next thing we want to do is get the contents of the file. So here I'm going to make a new variable called file contents, and it's going to be equal to file.read. And read is a magic function that will go into the file once it's opened, pull all the contents, and store it as one ginormous string. So we can actually print the file contents here. So if I press play, there you go. That's the whole file. That's cool, right? So the only trick about this is that they have to be in the same folder, right? My program and the file I'm trying to read have to be on the same folder on your computer. So now that you have a big giant string, uh, you need to be able to extract the, you know, maybe particular lines that you're interested in. So here, for example, every person is basically one line in the file. So how do we look at each line separately? And the way that we do that is using the split function. And split is something that is provided in Python as a way to break apart a string using a character. So if we were to look at these three lines here, how would we know that one person has ended and the other person has begun? The way that we do this is that at the end of every line is what's called a new line character. And this is exactly what we see in print statements. Uh, you know, it always produces that new line. It turns out that new line is a character. And what we can do is we can split this string based off that new line character. And when we do it, we will create what's called a list. We'll talk much more about lists later, but all you need to know is that the list contains each line. So the first thing in the list, where the index is zero, is that first line. The next thing in that list, where the index is one, is the next line of the file, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's extract each line in the file. And the way that we do that is we just say uh, lines in file. I'm just making a variable name. I'm going to say it's the file contents, and it's split, and then it's with the new line character. So I'm going to just type the new line character there. And then I'm going to, um, let's see, print out lines in file. And I'm just going to say, let's print out the first line in the file. All right, let's see if that works. If I press play, 
I should get, there you go, that's the first line in the file. And whatever, it, this is the sixth line in the file, right? Because we start at zero. So there's James. All right, this is cool because now I can look at an individual line in the file or I can look at all the lines in a file. So here, we're going to uh, examine each line in the file separately. And the way that I do that is with those for loops we talked about. So I can say this, for line in lines in file. And I'm just gonna print out line. And the first time you go through this loop, line will be the first line in the file. The second time you go through the loop, it will be the second line in the file. So when I press play, it prints out all, every line you're seeing. So that's pretty cool. But getting the line is not enough, right? I need to get a specific value. So let's say I'm looking for how many people survived. I want to be able to extract this value. So how do I do that? Oh look, they're all separated by a comma. So I can do a split again. So now we can split on comma rather than the new line. We can split this line by commas and when we do that we get another list. And now the first thing in the list is this first part. And the second thing is this part. So let's actually do that. So now we want to uh, extract each column from the line. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to make a variable called columns and it's going to be line.split on the comma. And once I do that, I can now print a particular column. So I can say columns zero. That's cool. Uh, I'm going to look at the first column. That should be whether or not they survived or not. There you go. Bunch of ones and zeros. To make sure it works, uh, the third thing is uh, the name. So if I put a two here, again, because we're starting counting at zero, I see all the names. Great. So now that we have this, let's actually solve our problem. Can we count how many people survived the Titanic? Well, we're going to need a counter. So I'm going to make a counts how many people survived. And I'm going to call it num survivors. And I'm going to start it off at zero. I'm going to go inside here and I'm going to go ahead and say if, and I'm going to say columns zero, if that is equal to one, then that means they survived. I'm going to say num survivors equals num survivors plus one. And I'm going to press play and I expect to see at least one survivor, right? Oh, wait, and I need to print it out. So now, when I press play, I see a zero. That's not good. Why is it zero? This is the last subtle point about reading a file. When Python reads a file, it assumes that everything in it is a string. So if I want to compare a string, which is what's here, to the number one, what I would have to do is actually convert it to a number. And when I do this, now it tells me there's 342 survivors. But before, I was trying to compare the, you know, the string one with the number one, and they are not equal to each other. All right? Turns out there's a bunch of other cool things you can do with strings. Um, for example, here, um, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this for now. Uh, let's say I have a string. My string equals fast neat average. I can go ahead and, uh, let's see, I can print out an individual letter. So print a single letter. So I can print my string two and that should print out the third letter so that should be an s okay um i can uh, uh count how many times you see a string so i can print my string dot count and then here i can just put in what i want to count uh let's see how many a's are there there's four i can also look for specific patterns. So for example, I could say, uh, how many AEs are there? There's zero of those, but there are one EAs, there it is. And then I can say, uh, tell me where a pattern is. So I can say, that, for example, my string dot find an A. And this will tell you the first place where an A was found. So this is position one, zero one. Um, I can do something like eat. So where's the first place I see eat? It's over here. 
and it tells you it's position 6. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right? So that's pretty cool there. The last one you can do is uh, tell me how long a string is. And you can say print, and here it's just going to be the length of my string. So length is an interesting function, and we'll talk more about that later. So in general, uh, you'll see that most problems that involve file input and output, especially when you're reading files, they're very similar um, to like the iteration problems. The only difference is how you're getting the data. So if we go back here and we try to, uh, if we look at this file, these three lines are almost always going to be the same. You're only going to change the file name, and that's because you're always opening the file, reading the contents, and getting the lines from the file. This here is almost always the same because you're looking at each line of the file. This here is almost always the same because you're trying to get the contents of each line, right? The specific data stored in each line. So once you have it, if you look at it, these lines are the same, these lines are the same. You're only adding a few extra lines and those are exactly using the same logic you've been doing with loop problems. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal to use data from a file. So that's it. That's everything we're going to talk about in terms of reading files. In the following video, we'll talk about writing files. So stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching. All right, bye.